The HR diagram. The HR diagram is a graph that is very powerful and very useful in astronomy. The two people who discovered this idea of graphing these particular characteristics were these two guys, Edgnar Hertzsprung, this guy up here, and Henry Norris Russell. It's that guy. And they both were working independently of each other, but came up with the idea more or less at the same time. And so they both get credit. And so HR of HR diagram uh, is based on their first uh, initials of their last names. So officially it's the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, but astronomers are far too lazy to say that over and over again. So we call it the HR diagram. And what they came up with was this idea of graphing absolute magnitude versus temperature for stars. So on our graph here, uh, our vertical scale, this says luminosity, uh, but as we have seen, that's essentially the same thing as um, absolute magnitude. But our scale is brightness, whether we use luminosity or absolute magnitude, either way it's a measure of brightness. Where the top of the scale is going to correspond to stars that are bright, and the bottom of the scale is going to correspond to stars that are dim. And our horizontal scale is temperature. So we use a capital T for temperature. You can see that we can also use spectral classification because of course spectral classification is based on temperature. Uh, the temperature scale does go backwards so we're going to go from the hottest on the left hand side to the coolest on the right hand side. So both these guys made these measurements of stars. They measured their temperature, they determined the absolute magnitude, and they plotted it on a graph. What they found was that 90% of the stars fall on a region that ultimately became called the main sequence because most of the stars were found there, so it's the main sequence, and that's this region right in here. So 90% of all stars kind of follow this pattern that uh, we see. So thinking in terms of brightness and temperature, this is telling us that for these stars there is a connection between brightness and temperature. Which sounds like it should be. I mean, it makes sense that it would be that way. And in general, the kinds of characteristics that we're looking at ultimately are determined by mass. We keep coming back to the mass of a star. And we see that again in the HR diagram. So up here in the top left corner, on our scale, uh, vertically we're looking at things that are bright. Horizontally we're looking at things that are hot. So up in this corner we're looking at objects that are hot and bright. Of course if it's hot then we know that tells us something about the color. So hot stars tend to be blue in color. On our scale we see that they're very bright and of course also the temperature is related to the spectral type. 
So those are also going to be the O and B stars in our spectral classification system. And what we now also know is these are the high mass stars. So high mass stars are always going to be found in this region on the HR diagram. And that region tells us that we are looking at stars that are hot, blue, bright, and spectral classification O and B. The other end of our main sequence is down here in the lower right. And again, looking at our scale vertically, we're now looking at the dim part in terms of brightness and the cool part in terms of temperature. So these stars are going to be cool. And of course, cool is going to determine that they're red. It's also going to determine that they're K and M stars in the spectral classification system. And these stars are quite dim. And we now know that these are low mass stars. So low mass stars are going to be found over in this lower part of the diagram. Our sun is in this region. It's kind of in the middle. So in the middle you've got things that are medium temperature, uh, more or less yellow or white in color. Uh, we don't tend to see uh, green as a star color. Uh, they end up looking more white than green. Uh, medium brightness and in terms of spectral classification these are the A, F, and G stars and of course our Sun is a G star. So those are the ones in the middle. But there's other stars here. We've got things over in these two corners. So what are those? Well up here in the upper right corner we have stars that are bright but they're cool. And recall that luminosity depends upon temperature and size. So the main sequence was dealing with how temperature determines luminosity. Now we're looking to see how size affects luminosity. Because we have stars that are cool, and typically a cool star is going to be faint. The fact that these things are incredibly bright tells us that these are very large stars. And that's why they're called giants and supergiants, because they are quite big. And so here we've got stars that are cool and red, but also very bright. And so the only way you can have a cool star appear very bright is that it must be very, very big. Similarly with these stars down here, now we're looking at stars that are dim, but very hot. And so, you know, hot stars should be bright. The fact that they're dim, they must be very small. And so we call those dwarfs. So the dwarf stars are very hot, so they're going to have a blue color, but they are very, very dim. And so uh, these white dwarfs, white because the temperature tends to make them look white in color and dwarf because they are quite small. So while most stars, like I said, 90% of the stars are on the main sequence, about 1% are giants and about 9% are dwarfs. Turns out this is going to provide us information about how stars live and die. So you can learn quite a bit 
about stars just from this one graph called the HR diagram.